and we're on. Huh. That, that was us. Okay. Hello, everyone. Picking back up with Mass Effect. Got almost a whole gang here. <coughs> Yay! And yeah, we got important things to do, like, you know, go see the council again. Or we could just not. I think the not sounds better. Yeah, I mean, Amy's clearly telling us to go one way, so so obviously we're going to go the other way. Look for stuff to do. Like scan keepers. Oh yeah. Free XP, man. XP is useful. So we just level up, yay! Maxed out charm so far. Got charm at five. Has a Do you get more points on it later? Yeah. Good to know. Because you're gonna need like nine at some time, some points. Eight nine. That means. Uh. There we go. Much Fitness. Increase health and grants the immunity ability. That's uh, pretty useful. So is that. You can now equip medium armor. Congrats. Okay. Garrus for carrion. Polizo and Noraya. Increase her stability. I guess they just hmm? I guess they just automatically level when you do. Or? Yeah. I okay. have no other armors. That's fine. I'm sure you'll find some better armor eventually. I, mean, I could just go buy some from that guy. Eh, no hurry. <laughs> I might be joking a bit in the meantime. <laughs> do what you gotta do. Mm, actually, I don't think there's many side quests left for us to take at the moment. I mean, there are, but be safer to not take them yet. Except yeah. that one. That one should be easy enough. Can I adjust the volume of ambient dialogue? Because that's actually quiet for me. No, yeah. I cannot. Well, it is a pretty old game. Don't even get me started. That Hanar refuses to listen to reason. Why can't it act in an orderly and lawful manner? Are there laws being broken here? I am not unreasonable. The Hanar is free to spew its nonsense once it purchases an evangelical permit. What's the purpose behind the evangelical permits? Forcing religious evangelicals to register for a permit weeds out undesirables. It keeps the area safe. The Citadel is too important to become a battleground for a religious war. I didn't know. Yeah. So if the Hanar gets a permit, it's allowed to preach? No. Registered evangelicals must follow regulations. There are specific areas where preaching is legal. Failure to follow the regulations results in the forfeiture of the license. Why don't you just arrest the Hanar? I could arrest the Jelly, but my superior has requested that I find a solution that does not anger the Hanar. The Hanar become... vocal when they feel their religious beliefs are being suppressed. If you'd like, I could talk to the Hanar for you. I have argued with the stubborn Jelly all afternoon. You are certainly welcome to try. I didn't know they could be angered. Do you desire to learn of the Enkindlers? Or has the Honorable CSEC officer enlisted assistance? Is this really how you want to represent the Enkindlers? The truth of the Enkindlers must be made known. They gave the Hanar language and gave the universe the mass relays. This one only wishes to spread the truth to any who will listen. There is no intent to cause trouble. Is this how the Enkindlers would want you to use this gift of consciousness? The Enkindlers would wish for their message to be spread to all sentient races. The Enkindlers wouldn't wish their message to be spread by breaking society's laws. This one hears wisdom. Perhaps enthusiasm has clouded judgment in this matter. This one departs now, and will not intrude upon the Presidium again. 
Paragon! Yay! I see the Yay! Hands. Thank you. Happy to help. Here, for your assistance in this matter. Now, if you'll excuse me, I should report to my superiors. XP and Omni Gel. Very nice, very nice. Thanks. So he didn't really pay you, he just gave you what's effectively a lockpick. <laughs> Omni Gel has many uses. So you put the only one you've told me so far. That's the only one I remember off the top of my head, to be honest. And you haven't even actually needed to use it yet. It's been so long since I played through these games. I really hope that that ambient dialogue issue is fixed in Mass Effect 2, because it actually does bother me. Yeah, I hope so. At least the subtitles pick it up, though. Yeah, that's nice. Also, you can tell the game's old and jank when touching a ledge causes the camera to jerk. <laughs> Udina's presenting the Quarian's evidence to the Council. Eden Prime was a major victory. The Beacon has brought us one step closer to finding the Conduit. And one step closer to the return of the Reapers. You wanted proof? There it is. This evidence is irrefutable, Ambassador. Saren will be stripped of his Spectre status, and all efforts will be made to bring him in to answer for his crimes. I recognize the other voice, the one speaking with Saren. Matriarch Venezia. Who's she? Matriarchs are powerful Asari who have entered the final stage of their lives. Revered for their wisdom and experience, they serve as guides and mentors to my people. Matriarch Venezia is a powerful biotic, and she had many followers. She will make a formidable ally for Saren. I'm more interested in the Reapers. What do you know about them? Only what was extracted from the Geth's memory core. The Reapers were an ancient race of machines that wiped out the Protheans. Then they vanished. The Geth believe the Reapers are gods, and Saren is the prophet for their return. We think the Conduit is the key to bringing them back. Saren's searching for them. That's why he attacked Eden Prime. Do we even know what this Conduit is? Saren thinks he can bring back the Reapers. That's bad enough. Listen to what you're saying. Saren wants to bring back the machines that wiped out all life in the galaxy? Impossible. It has to be. Where did the Reapers go? Why did they vanish? How come we found no trace of their existence? If they were real, we'd have found something. I tried to warn you about Saren, and you refused to face the truth. Don't make the same mistake again. This is different. You proved Saren betrayed the Council. We all agree he's using the Geth to search for the Conduit, but we don't really know why. The Reapers are obviously just a myth, Commander. A convenient <laughs> lie to cover Saren's true purpose. A legend he is using to bend the Geth to his will. Fifty thousand years ago, the Reapers wiped out all galactic civilization. If Saren finds the Conduit, it will happen again. Saren is a rogue agent on the run for his life. He no longer has the rights or resources of a Spectre. The Council has stripped him of his position. That is, that is not good enough. You know he's hiding somewhere in the Traverse. Send your fleet! A fleet cannot track down one man. A Citadel fleet could secure the entire region, keep the Geth from attacking any more of our colonies. Or it could trigger a war with the Terminus systems. We won't be dragged into a galactic confrontation over a few dozen human colonies. I can take Saren down. The Commander's right. There is a way to stop Saren that doesn't require fleets or armies. No. It's too soon. Humanity is not ready for the responsibilities that come with joining the Spectres. You don't have to send a fleet into the Traverse, and the Ambassador gets his human Spectre. Everybody's happy.
Ya, yeah, yeah. They don't have much of a better solution anyway. Commander Shepard, step forward. Awesome music number one in the, in the series. Really? I hear it some of it, but it's a very limited for me. Hmm. I have to fix that. It is the decision of the council yeah. to be granted I mean, all the powers and the powers. As long as the recording is just it, it doesn't bother me that much. Hmm. Spectre is an untrained but chosen. Individuals forged in the fire of service and battle. Those whose actions elevate them above the rank of fire. Spectres are an idea, a symbol, the embodiment of courage, determination, and self-reliance. They are the right hand of the council, instruments of our will. Spectres bear a great burden. They are protectors of galactic peace, both our first and last line of defense. The safety of the galaxy is theirs to uphold. You are the first human Spectre, Commander. This is a great accomplishment for you and your entire species. I'm honored, Counselor. We're sending you into the Traverse after Seren. He's a fugitive from justice, so you are authorized to use any means necessary to apprehend or eliminate him. I'll find him. This meeting of the Council is adjourned. Congratulations, Commander. We've got a lot of work to do, Shepard. You're going to need a ship, a crew, supplies. You'll get access to special equipment and training. You should go down to the CSEC Academy and speak to the Spectre Requisitions Office. Anderson, come with me. Oh my. I need your help to set all this up. Ah, uh, poor Anderson. <laughs> Constantly stuck with that asshole. Mm -hmm. The ambassador would be a little more grateful. <laughs> Until I find Saren, I haven't done anything. Come on. Right behind you, Shepard. Hey. Spectre training, charm, and intimidate. Yep. More points. But that's how you get more. Yeah, that and filling up the Paragon meter. Or Renegade, if that's what I'm doing. Hmm. Oh, cool. Inspector training yeah, increases a lot of things, actually. That's unity. Also pretty nice. That's also pretty nice. Yep, the priority. The this can do this can do the stuff we barely even use. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure we'll get to the point in which we use it at some point. Eventually. I'll level them up later. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right. Actually, who's that over there? Why? As I say, why is it even lighting it? He has a quest. I want a break. Talk to someone who doesn't need anything. I've got a lot on my mind. Maybe I can help. Hmm. Maybe you can. You're a soldier, right? You ever head out to the Traverse? The Traverse is a rough place. We're out there quite a bit. My brother's the captain of a ship called the Majesty. It was crossing the Traverse a few days ago when it disappeared. Just dropped right off the grid. And that usually means one of two things. They had massive mechanical failure, or they were attacked. Neither one of those options leaves a lot of hope. I won't give up on my brother. Not yet. I've got the coordinates for the last transmission from his vessel. What kind of ship was it? Don't let the name fool you. The Majesty's just a small trading vessel, only a handful of crew but he kept it in good condition. I don't think mechanical failure is too likely. But they don't have any real weapons or shields. If anyone did come after them, the Majesty'd be a sitting duck. If your brother's still alive, I'll find him. Give me the coordinates. I'll forward them to your ship right away. Please let me know as soon as you find The ship I don't have? <laughs> the details. Little detail. Why me? <laughs> <laughs> 
Hmm. That is where I'm supposed to go. Okay. Hmm. Hey, guess what? Memory is not perfect. I bet. Well, we can still go to the uh, requisitions officer and see all the stuff that we can't afford. Hmm. You see that, that I'm thinking to shepherds uh, walking. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Or jogging or whatever. Well, the motion blur is a little jank, even for me. There's motion blur? Yeah. I guess it's hard to tell apart with this girl. <laughs> Commander Shepard, here with the Alliance Military. First time on the Citadel, that about right? How did you know all that? I'm the CSEC Requisitions Officer. I need to make sure our buyers are authorized. So, will you be purchasing anything today, Commander Shepard? Show me what you've got. Sounds good. Just let me set you up. Well, this must be a mistake. System telling me to offer you our select stock. Spectre? Well, I heard about that, but I didn't realize it was you. Sorry, Commander. Just show me what you've got. I'll open the rare stocks for you, Commander. Enjoy. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't afford that shit. <coughs> yeah, that's uh, just a bit. Not even close. Just a bit. So, like, you have access to like the best of the best, but at the same time, you can actually afford it. <laughs> yeah, I can't afford this shit. Need that. Hmm? What are you? A grenade upgrade. You can carry more grenades. <laughs> and a new license. So, increase the shop in the shape, I guess. Yep. Mmm. So. Oh, here. Seven, yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, inventory management in this game is a pain in the ass. So it seems. Does it, does it actually let you sell weapons you have equipped? No. Okay, that's good at least. And the family center is actually this place, like all of them. In light of the recent attack on Eden Prime, many colonial investors are pulling their support for future projects. Proponents of expanded human colonization insist that Eden Prime was an isolated case. Nevertheless, colonist enrollment has dropped sharply. Many oh, colonial shit. proposals are on hold until backers have some reassurance that human colonies will be adequately protected. Found you. I think that's gonna be... I've got big news for you, Shepard. Captain Anderson is stepping down as commanding officer of the Normandy. The ship is yours now. She's quick and quiet, and you know the crew. Perfect ship for a Spectre. Treat her well, Commander. I'll take good care of her, sir. I know you will, Commander. Yeah, makes sense. I want sense. the truth. Why are you stepping down, sir? You needed your own ship. A Spectre can't answer to anyone but the Council. And it's time for me to step down. Come clean with me, Captain. You owe me that much. I was in your shoes 20 years ago, Shepard. They were considering me for the Spectres. Why didn't you ever mention this? What was I supposed to say? I could have been a Spectre, but I blew it? I failed, Commander. It's not something I'm proud of. Ask me later and I'll tell you the whole story. For now, all you need to know is, I was sent on a mission with Saren, and he made sure the Council rejected me. I had my shot. It came and went. Now you have a chance to make up for my mistakes. What kind of leads do we have? Saren's gone. Don't even try to find him. But we know what he's after. The Condor. He's got his Geth scouring the Traverse, looking for clues. We had reports of Geth in the Pharaoh system shortly before our colony there dropped out of contact, and there have been sightings around Noveria. Find out what Saren was after on Pharaohs in Noveria. 
Maybe you can figure out where the conduit is before he does. Anything else? We have one more lead. Matriarch Benezia, the other voice on that recording. She has a daughter, a scientist who specializes in the Protheans. We don't know if she's involved, but it might be a good idea to try and find her. See what she knows. Her name's Liara, Dr. Liara Cassoni. Ah! <laughs> we have reported that she was for an archaeological <laughs> dig on one of the uncharted worlds in the Artemis Tau Cluster. Sounds like we should head for the Artemis Tau Cluster. It's your decision, Commander. You're a Spectre now. You don't answer to us. Your actions still reflect on humanity as a whole. You make a mess and I get stuck cleaning it up. I'll try not to make things any harder on you, Ambassador. Glad to hear it, Commander. Remember, you were a human long before you were a Spectre. I have a meeting to get yes. to. Captain Anderson can sure. answer any questions you might have. Immediately goes and makes a mess out of everything. Yes, Commander? How are you holding up? Honestly, this isn't how I pictured my career coming to an end. Pushing papers really isn't my thing. But you're the one who can stop, Sarah. I believe in you, Shepard. If that means I have to step aside, so be it. Tell me what happened with you and Saren 20 years ago. It's close to 20 years ago now. Ambassador Goyle was our representative here on the Citadel. Like Udina, she wanted to get a human into the Spectres. She chose me. The Council sent Saren to keep an eye on me and evaluate my performance, just like they sent Nihilus to keep tabs on you. I think I deserve the whole story. We had intel on a rogue scientist being funded by Batarian interests. He was trying to set up a facility to develop illegal AI technology out in the Verge. Alliance Intel had done all the work, but the Council wanted a Spectre involved. We compromised. I was assigned to help Saren in his investigation. We tracked the scientist to a refining facility on Kamala. He was hidden away somewhere inside, protected by an army of Batarian mercenaries. The plan was simple. Sneak into the plant, capture the scientist, sneak back out. Quick, quiet, and a minimum of bloodshed. I'm guessing things didn't go as planned. Saren and I split up to cover more ground. Then about halfway through the mission, there was a massive explosion in the refinery core. Officially, it was ruled an accident, but I think Saren detonated it on purpose to draw off the enemy guards. How many casualties? The explosion tore the refinery to shreds. The whole place was on fire. Black chemical clouds poured out into the atmosphere. Nobody inside survived. There was a camp for the workers and their families nearby. Between the fires and the toxic fumes, the final death count was over 500. Mostly civilians. Saren didn't care. The pilot was eliminated. Mission accomplished. And I ended up taking the blame. That ended all talk of me joining the Spectres. Saren caused the explosion. How'd he pin it on you? In his report, Saren accused me of blowing his cover. He said it was my fault the guards were ready for us. He claimed that's why it turned into a massacre. Saren's report was all the proof the Council needed to kill my chances of becoming a Spectre. Don't blame yourself, Captain. I don't. I blame Saren. I think Saren thinks to go bad. He was looking for an excuse to blow that refinery. Maybe he just likes the violence. Maybe he was just trying to make me look bad to keep humans out of the Spectres. If so, he pulled it off. The only thing I care about is stopping Saren. You're right, Gordon. It's no good for what do you know about the Artemis Tau Cluster? Not much. I've never been there myself. A handful of systems with a few small, uncharted worlds, but no real colonies. Are we going to kill Soviets? <laughs> My advice is to look for the Prothean ruins. Any extra intel you can give me on our colony at Pharos? The entire planet used to be one giant Prothean city. Mostly ruins now. But some of the infrastructure is still intact. The colony Best tried to time. build on what the Protheans left behind. We lost all contact with them when the Geth attacked. What can you tell me about Novaria? Novaria's trouble. Always has been. The whole planet's basically a center for corporations to conduct illegal research. Watch your back, Nation. Spectres are about the only form of Citadel authority Novaria respects. But they aren't popular. I should go. I'll be here if you need me. Yeah, he kind of got shafted, didn't he? Yeah. Even I would like being turned into a paper pusher after all of that. 
Stand by, short party. Decontamination in progress. Yes, decontamination from the stage. <laughs> Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Just watch your back, Commander. If things go bad on this mission, you're next on the chopping block. Saren's out there somewhere, and we're gonna find him. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Intercom's open. You got anything you want to say to the crew? Now's the time. This is Commander Shepard speaking. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. I won't lie to you, crew. This mission isn't going to be easy. This began with an attack on a human settlement in the Traverse. But we know Saren won't stop there. His Geth armies aren't going to stay on the far fringes of Citadel space. Our enemy knows we're coming. Wherever he searches for the conduit, we'll be there. We will hunt him to the very ends of the galaxy and bring him down. Humanity needs to do this. Not just for our own sake, but for the sake of every other species in Citadel space. Saren must be stopped. And I promise you all, we will stop him. Well said, Commander. Captain will be proud. The Captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Yes, sir. Dramatic speech? Check. Yeah. I also just realized how thick Shepard's neck is. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Atlas over here. Massive neck. Yeah. Well, let's go see where everyone's hanging out. We know Med Bay's over there, because we've been there before. There's a lounge. Caden hangs out over here. What's oh, I see. Hey, free stuff. Yeah. Free grenade. <laughs> For me to inevitably throw when I try to reload. By the I way, by the way, that eleva this I elevator is normally excruciatingly slow. Good, fast loading. Yeah, but mods. <laughs> okay, there's Garrus, Rex, Ash. Cool. There's our store. <laughs> he doesn't even get a I name. He's like store. Okay, there's Tally. Junior Adams. How to know if someone's actually relevant or may come up later? They have a fucking name. Yeah. Like, oh, shit. You know that Quarian Tally? She's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engine. I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You've got an eye for talent, Commander, but I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served on, probably the fastest vessel ever designed. <coughs> She's the only one using the new Tantalus Drive Core. What's so special about the Tantalus Drive Core? Proportionally, it's about twice the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster, we can run at FTL speeds longer before we have to discharge the core. That's pretty work. Fill me in on the IES stealth system. How does it work exactly? You can't hide a ship out in space. They emit too much heat and radiation. Too easy for sensors to pick them up. Unless you find a way to capture those emissions. So our stealth systems trap the energy we give off in storage sinks built into the ship itself. No emissions to give away our location. Eventually the sinks have to be vented. More than a few hours silent running and they overheat. Cook us inside our own hull. There's no way for anyone to detect us? A visual scan can still pick us up. Anyone looking out a window can see us plain as day, but you have to be pretty close to get an actual visual out in space. Most vessels yeah, will have chances. <laughs> as long as the stealth systems are engaged, they can't see us. Not unless we accelerate to FTL speeds. Why doesn't it work with faster than light travel? Cranking up the FTL blue shifts our emissions, pushes them into frequencies too high to capture in the sinks. As soon as we make the jump, it's like setting off a flare. The sensors can yeah, be the location. Whenever we enter or exit FTL flight, 
but for short range missions, our stealth systems are amazing. And we've got the only one. Hmm. So, you know, they can't, as long as they don't physically see us or we don't have to bug out or bug in, we're good. Carry well, out. to be fair, if they see us as we're entering. Yeah, if they see us as we jump, the, all they've got is our course. They don't know where we're actually coming out. Yeah. Dr. Tally. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive cord like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. The Normandy's a prototype. Cutting edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a quarry. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. Fair enough. If we don't have anything like this, we may do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the get. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're yeah, that's... being repaired, modified, and refit. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. <laughs> mostly. We try to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. I want to know more about the pilgrim. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Can a captain choose to reject the gift? Uh, that doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. I can't believe they just send you off alone. It's not like they just cast us out. Before we leave, we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla, and given gifts to help us on our journey. We also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease. Generations of living in an isolated and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. By the time we yeah, leave, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. If I remember my reading somewhere right, uh, I think, or I think she mentions it somewhere, the training they receive for their pilgrimage puts them on par with most military special forces in, the, in Mass Effect. So yes, they are well equipped to deal with the pilgrimage. <laughs> yeah, and explains why she can quite readily handle herself. I want to talk yeah. about something else. Like what? Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million quarians in the flotilla, and each of us relies on <laughs> the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, 
We have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. That's your government? The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, huh. most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them the guidance. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials. In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admiralty. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that oh. served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave Four times. That's I go. Sounds like it decently will give in their situation. Yeah, and I think this entire conversation is completely pointless in terms of gameplay. Right. Shandification! Uh, for you. <laughs> <laughs> you aren't important right now. Codex entry. Thanks for bringing me this board, Commander. I knew working with this vector. Have you worked with a Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. C-Sec, you bury by your rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate you. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel. See how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, yeah. I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not bad. Got it? I wasn't trying to. I understand. <laughs> Check yourself, Garrus. Yeah. I mean, the, that doctor did have a bit of issue. She had a brief scare. Yeah. Also, shortcut to equip them outside of a mission. <sighs> That's convenient, I guess. Yep. Yeah, it's like, there's something I want to check about this conversation before I actually I start. I you need any more confirmation that you get exactly these party members. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Weird. I mean, when you have everything tabbed, but then you don't. So, well, when you have so much tabbed, you can you cannot find what you have tabbed. I know, right? Whoops. Well, yeah, at least I don't have nearly as many tabs as I have bookmarks. I know, right? Okay. Commander. What's your opinion on the last mission? Oh, that's... Kinda wish you got there sooner, Commander. No offense, I appreciate the rescue. I just wish 
You wish we'd been able to save the rest of your unit? Yes, sir. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. The Geth are perfect ambushers. They don't move, they don't make noise, they don't even breathe. Sir, they have flashlight heads. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. <laughs> they have flashlight heads. I'm fed enough. I'm sorry, Commander. I need to get my duty squared away. I wouldn't mind talking more later, though. Dismiss, Chief. Sir. Guess she's not in the mood to talk. Huh. What about big, big and tough over here? Nice ship you've got, Shepard. What can I do for you? What's your story, Max? There's no story. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. You Krogan lived for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An uh. infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. Sorry, Rex. I wasn't trying to get you upset. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us. But it's not what's killing us. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Hire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Solarians if you want details. They made it. Ooh. All I know, <laughs> it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected. Everyone. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? <laughs> to ask a Krogan, <laughs> would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. So long, Rex. And that's uh, oof. The downsides of a water of a water species, huh? Yeah. What's the phrase? Klingon scientists get no respect. Sounds about right. Chapter Kaden. So. Anything you need, Commander? Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I've wasted enough of your time for now, Commander. We'll have time for <laughs> personal debrief. Okay, then. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander? Yes, he also doesn't want to chat. Maybe the... Maybe the steward... Salty that we picked all of the aliens first. <laughs> nah, they're probably just waiting until we get Liara. Maybe. Which I'm guessing that's gonna be your... Yeah, may as well go get her. I mean, I'm guessing that's gonna be your romantic interest. No, nope. just, gonna, just gonna skip the romance this entirely this, this game. Okay. Go straight to the quarry, and, but she's on the se second game. Uh, Total length, 444.7 kilometers. Cool. A different variant from the one you have here? No, no, no. Same one, just she doesn't become a romance option until the second game. Oh, I see. 
Population, 13.2 million, not including keepers. About a few people. Yeah. Okay, and the funny is that he has to specify it doesn't include keepers, which really makes sense since you can't really tell them apart and ah. you can't really make sense of them either. Okay, so it shows ones I, ones I know and shows other ones that I just don't know yet. Uh, where's the Hercules cluster? Yeah, the stick site? No, I mean. Possibly. Down, right? No, that's Artemis Tau. Oh, okay. Hmm. That's annoying. Add a campaign. Hmm. Exactly, you're looking for. Uh, I might be looking for a bug to, to max out the Paragon meter quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. Uh, I'll try this one. Okay. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> beep, beep. I am not beep. sorry in the slightest. Your way. How long have we been recording? Uh, we're getting to about to that point. Okay. Oh, not here. Let's try this one. We're not in a time game, right? Nah, nah. Oh, nope. nope. Some of these we could probably actually land on, I'm just not checking them yet. Let's try this one. I'm still... I guess we're just looking for the here. But... Yeah, I'm looking for the right planet. <laughs> nope. There it is. <laughs> Alright, so... And next time we can actually drop down there and find the final squad mate. Yay!